This screencast aims to introduce you to Silip's professional knowledge and skills base, and in particular, how you can identify, develop, and gain recognition for your knowledge and skills using the self-assessment tool. If you've not seen it already, this is the professional knowledge and skills base, and this is the high-level diagram which uh, pulls the whole thing together. We have placed ethics and values right at the heart of what we believe library information and knowledge practitioners need if they're going to work in the uh, in the profession. That is then brought together with the areas of professional expertise and generic skills that we believe that you need. We've included generic skills because employers felt that it was extremely important that these generic skills sat alongside the professional expertise that you need. We've then uh, wrapped that uh, within the wider library and information and knowledge sector context and the wider organisational and environmental context. And we've done that because it's very important for library information and knowledge practitioners to understand uh, what's going on in the wider profession so that they understand the, the opportunities in terms of partnership, but also understand uh, how they can learn from each other in terms of some of those kind of key concepts and key issues that, that run right through the profession. And the organisational and environmental context is there because it's absolutely fundamental that we understand what's going on in our wider organisations, what's going on in the wider environment, so that we're able to develop and deliver relevant services to that organisation and so that that responds to the wider environment in which we exist. The areas of professional expertise and generic skills, generally those uh, break down between six and ten kind of key knowledge and skill set areas and uh, the detail of those are included in the self-assessment tool um, and I'll show you sort of how that looks uh, in, uh, in a little bit. In terms of how it's used, obviously one of the fundamental reasons for us developing it is it outlines the skills base for the information professions. So you can use it as a tool to demonstrate uh, to your employer or maybe key stakeholders about what your knowledge and skills are um, and, you know, and, and how they're deployed. Um, we also use it as a way of identifying courses which can be accredited by SILIP. So any courses, uh, academic or vocational courses uh, within that's relevant to the library and information profession. Those uh, We use um, the PKSB to map those courses to identify whether they are indeed relevant and will prepare students for, a, uh, for, for their work within the profession. Uh, it's also used as part of the development plan for certification, chartership and fellowship. So we use it as a way for members to kind of identify what areas of knowledge and skills they may wish to develop as part of their journey. And as I've mentioned already, it is a self-assessment tool for any member who wants to think about uh, their personal continuing professional development, identifying areas that they may wish to develop um, as part of their ongoing work. In terms of how you access the professional knowledge and skills base, uh, that's um, available via the website. Um, and so if you go to www.silip.org.uk forward slash PKSB, you will need to uh, log in to be able to access it. And you download it. It's uh, a, an interactive PDF that you download um, and you can fill it in using that. We will um, and we are in the process of developing an online tool um, which will enable you to fill it in um, and uh, save different versions of that and as soon as that becomes available we'll be updating this with more details about what that, what that looks like and how you can use it. As part of the self-assessment um, tool, uh, there are criteria um, so that you can consider what uh, level of knowledge and skills you might have. And these are the self-assessment uh, criteria that we've developed um, that you can use. Now, the key thing about the professional knowledge and skills base is that it does represent the wider information professions. And so there is no expectation that you will have a comprehensive or a advanced level of knowledge and skills right across the professional knowledge and skills base. 
the, your level of knowledge and skills would uh, depend entirely on uh, factors like what part of the, the, the sector that you're working in, uh, what level you're working in, and actually, uh, more specifically, your, your specific role um, within your organization. Um, you may even find, if you're doing a similar role to another person in your organization, that your level of knowledge and skills will also uh, be um, different, dependent on the, the specific needs of your role. Um, but it is um, a really good way of thinking about the, the levels of knowledge and skills that you've got, identifying you know, maybe new emerging areas that you may wish to find out a little bit about, um, identifying areas where you are um, a, you know, an expert or you do know a lot, or areas where you think that you actually might want to develop. So this is what um, a, a section of the professional knowledge and skills base um, looks like. Uh, so you can see that what, so once you get into the self-assessment tool, uh, you have like the, the, the information about the, the key area, and this one is organizing knowledge and information. Um, and uh, you've then got the specific knowledge and skills areas uh, beneath that with an explanation about what we, what we believe that that, that means. You'll then see that there are two columns. So there's the current rating, that's where you think you are at the moment, and your ideal rating, where you'd like to be in the future. And we've left that um, as an ideal rather than future because that may depend um, in terms of how you're using it, whether you're thinking it's a specific point in the future, for example, as part of your development plan for certification, chartership or fellowship, you may have a particular date in mind or it might be where you think you'd like to be maybe in five ten years time or right now that's what you would prefer to be right now no one is going to mark you on these no one is going to come along and ask you for specific evidence but we have provided um, comments boxes so that you can actually identify either, you know, why you think that you scored yourself the way that you have, or you may be thinking uh, using, about using that to identify how you think you might want to uh, develop your knowledge and skills. That, uh, that last thing is specifically something that we expect from the development plans where people are actually identifying areas that they want to develop and kind of identifying how they're going to go about developing those knowledge and skill sets. One uh, tool that we've got um, in the absence of the online tool at the moment for uh, those members that are actually doing certification, chartership and fellowship is uh, an Excel version of the professional knowledge and skills base. This enables you um, to very quickly identify any areas um, where you have actually got a mismatch between your current score and your ideal score. And you can see there, there's kind of um, the, the red where um, ontologies and cataloging and resource description um, are, you know, that that person obviously is considering those areas that they, they need to, de to develop. And that uh, tool is available uh, within the section on professional registration um, for those members undertaking uh, uh, certification, chartership or fellowship. So uh, once you've been through the uh, professional knowledge and skills base, um, then it's an opportunity for you to think about how you might want to identify your, uh, what you're going to do to develop your knowledge and skills. And I think the one thing I would, be, would want to be really clear about is the fact that it is not about just going off and identifying training courses. There are a variety of ways that we can all develop our knowledge and skills. That might be through doing some reading, either professional reading using the Silip Update Journal or um, some facet books. It might be going and attending a, a member network event. It might be uh, going and training, uh, doing some training or uh, you know some other event. Personally, one of my favorites is actually sitting down and having a coffee with someone and talking to them about their role or a particular issue to help develop my knowledge and skills. 
all of these are absolutely relevant and I think it's about identifying what your knowledge and skills gap is and thinking about the absolute best way of developing um, your knowledge and skills in that area and that's something that we at SILIP think is extremely important you must do the thing that makes most sense for your knowledge and, and, and skills gap um, and developing your CPD if you're particularly interested in thinking about you know uh, you know some ideas about how you can develop some knowledge and skills uh, on the virtual learning environment you will find the, uh, this section the resources to support the professional knowledge and skills base um, in which this uh, screencast sits and within there there are a, a range of things um, firstly uh, we've been developing along with our special interest groups some sector templates the idea of those being that if you're interested possibly in considering a, a career or a moving career into a different part of the information profession you can get an idea about the kind of level of knowledge and skills that you might want if you were to move into that area they are only um, suggestions um, obviously we would recommend that if you're serious about moving into to, to those areas um, it's definitely worth uh, speaking to people um, from that area maybe get in contact with one of our special interest groups um, or in fact start looking at kind of uh, job descriptions role profiles to kind of get a real sense of the kind of um, level of knowledge and skills they're looking for also within this section you'll see that we've created um, a structure based on the professional knowledge and skills base and over time we're going to be adding uh, CPD opportunities into this um, so there will be hopefully webinar content there might be downloads presentations um, a whole range of things that you might be able to um, access um, we've already started populating that so do have a look and keep uh, having a look back um, of things that you might find useful um, uh, to support your development in those key areas some things that we have included already include um, uh, some webinars. Uh, we also have lists of uh, facet titles arranged by those um, by those sections. We also identify uh, our special interest groups as they map to the areas of the professional knowledge and skills base. If you want to find out more, you can. Um, access uh, the PKSB on the SILIT website and there's some more details on there. Um, if you would like any further guidance, uh, please do contact the member services team at SILIP. Um, there's also, um, particularly if you are um, undertaking uh, one of the levels of professional registration, some additional guidance that you'll find um, uh, in this section about the use of the PKSB within certification, chartership and fellowship. And I would recommend that you have a read through. And if you've got any further questions, either contact the team, your mentor or one of your candidate support officers.